day, YouTubers, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from all around the world. So we just took the board that was over here and cut all the tails off. And then we sort of measured the board. Hopefully it'll work in more than just here and here and here, but I think we'll have to cut it again. Yeah, I'll have to cut a few notches off of it again for this one. So at least we can get four out of it before we cut it a second time to do that last that top mast on the forward I haven't got a lot of work done this week because I was helping my wife do some projects and put together a, a laser CNC engraver for her and filming that so she can put it on her channel. There's Jamie's Arts a la Carts and YouTube. But uh, this is a CNC <clears throat> with a laser attached to the actuator. So it can move this way, X and Y, and uh, load some software in it, plug it in and put whatever you want to engrave or cut. It will cut through, it's a 10 watt laser, so it'll cut through thin stuff and it'll engrave on thicker stuff. Burn. But she has a 10 watt CNC laser for her crafts. A new uh, thing that she gets to try. And she's got a kiln, melting glass, and <clears throat> making wreaths and doing painting. She does uh, paint pours and all kind of other stuff out here in this other shed. There's some examples there, some trivets that are paint poured, epoxy. So, took me a couple of days to get that on film and put together. I did it all in a closed caption format because it took so long. And of course, it's near the end of June here in Florida. And Florida gets really hot in June, July, and August, so we have kicked on the AC today. So let me get this one positioned and clamped in place for where I think it should be level or plumb and then I'm thinking I'm going to have to unfurl a bunch of this thread onto my little thread holder board so that I can slip it through here as I go around and around with the thread luckily we only got like 10 10 wraps to go and I was considering cutting this down to make the thread shorter but I don't, it, thread's so cheap it's not worth that so we're just going to use it up so let me get on that positioning and threading that one up 
and then we'll look at something else to do after we get that glued because we can't mess with it after we glue it and let it dry for several hours before we proceed on to the next thing I'm going to look forward in the prints and see what else I can get ready might be able to start shaping some of these um, yard arms for the sails Okay, so we got this one wrapped with the thread and glued up. So, we'll let that glue dry and we'll cut those tails off. So, the next thing in the plans. Of course, we finished up last week the decorations here on the back of the ship. And we got some more big ones that go on the side here. But they want us to do some mast yard arms and some rigging first. Quite a few steps. So I'm going to get some of this out and start shaping the ends of them. So you get a 5mm doll, it's 195mm long, and we got to shape it down to 2 millimeters on each end. And then we do another one, and another one, and another one. So one, two, three, four, five. So we've got ten of them to cut and shape that are different sizes. Four millimeter, five millimeter. There's one there that's eight millimeters, seven millimeters. So we got to keep our eye on that make sure we're not picking the wrong one out of this stock I guess 10 yard arms shaping and yeah, after that they want us to start putting the the sails on them of course we got to paint them let them dry before we start all that mess and then the bearings so they can slide the yard arms up and down the mast those are pretty tedious so there's a finished one a bunch of blocks, one on each corner, some tails with blocks on them, the bearing, and sew the sail on there. Each one of these yard arms is going to be a little project. We got to do that ten times. Well, let me get cutting and shaping on these yard arms. Okay, so we got them all marked up for cut length and the size, diameter, and length of millimeters. Some of these smaller ones will be able to get two yard arms out of one stick, but all the bigger ones we're going to have some waste. And I had this one in my stock over there from, oh, that's actually from 
Walmart, I think. For the uh, seven millimeter one, I made a list here of how many, what size, and how long they were. And I didn't have any seven millimeter stock left over, which means I used it somewhere else. So keep that in mind if you're building this. You might have to go get a stick of seven. A lot of these darker ones that don't have a sticker on them are from a previous build, but the ones that have stickers are from Walmart. You can buy stuff from Walmart or the hobby store in different diameters and length and I try to save everything that I don't use so I can use it later on again if I need to. So we're going to take these as a whole pile and cut them all to length on here real careful so we don't chip it up. I might change that blade to a finer blade. I use that rough cut blade when I was making them boards for the rat lines. So we'll use a finer blade in there. I got a bunch of blades right here to choose from. And then we'll uh, either use this or this. And we'll put that dial in the drill. And then the other end of the dial sticking out of the drill with oh, crash and burn. Well, the other end of that doll sticking out of the drill, I've been using a tool like this to hold that doll against so I'm not using my fingers to hold it. And you need a little cut in there so that it stays lined up in the right spot and then the drill is turning using the battery power part of the drill while it's turning I can push in on the grinder or the sanding belt and then move the drill in and out and then shape the end of that that yard arm so that's the process of how I'll shape those easily without trying to hand sand them and it goes pretty quick that way. You just got to keep your calipers handy. And when you get close to where you think you want to be, stop and measure it. And then try to keep the taper at a certain length. So I'll make a mark on there. <clears throat> where I want the taper to start. And then where I get down to the small dimension that they give us for each one. So like that eight millimeter one, we're gonna take two millimeters off of it. <clears throat> Probably a 75 millimeter length of two millimeter taper. So that's the kind of thing you wanna watch as you shape them. And that's the best way I've found to do it. So let's cut and shape and see what we get with. So what I'm doing now, uh, i got one of them shaped already. So this was 6 millimeters by 315 long, and we shaped it about 100 millimeters from here to the end down to 3 millimeters on both sides. So the trick with this this one is the 8 millimeter yard arm is to put a little bit of sandpaper on the end where your drill chuck grabs it but you got to wrap the sandpaper in the opposite direction so that when you tighten down on the chuck it 
doesn't curl the sandpaper back off of there because it's turning, you know, so you want to make the sandpaper end tail be the same direction as the chuck is turning when you tighten it. So that way the sandpaper stays on there nice and it protects the end that you're working from to getting marred up. Especially after we shape this end here, we're going to turn it around and put it in the drill again and it's going to be shaped to the final shape minus a little touch up. And we don't want to mar up the end of it. So that's why we do that with the, the sandpaper. And now with a, a hundred millimeter because this is 300 long so we're going to leave a hundred in the middle and we'll take a hundred off of each end so to right there which we can go by eye get shaped down to five five millimeters. But it's easy to get the end to five millimeters, but you want to make a taper all the way up to that hundred millimeter mark. Second one. Eight more to go. 
this is dry now so we can cut those tails off move it around to the other side thanks for watching